And here we go. Hello, everybody. Thanks for being here. Let me double check that everything's fine. I'm probably just a tad low on my chair. Bear with me. I don't want to break my back on this, but we're here. We're here in Studio Eins, meaning Studio One, but the German version. But I'm just kidding because there's, there's no German version of it. This is the English version. So these are the stamps today for our mix loop. We have the good people at Isotope that empowered my own mixing talent, you know, as discussable as it is, to use their products to demonstrate how I would approach um, using Isotope in a mixing slash pre-mastering situation. Let's call it that. It wouldn't be proper mastering, but it would be something where Isotope and Neutron, which has now reached version 3, um, could be really useful for people mixing there. So Mix Loop is the show, is the amazing talk show in which we talk about uh, mixing because it's called Mix Loop, so it's pretty cool. The second thing about Mix Loop is that you get to see your song mixed in this show, and there's usually no safety net, no, I said, pre rehearsed jokes, or, you know, stuff like that. We just take the tracks. I usually either don't listen to them or just set the session up and just give it a quick listen, and then we start mixing it from the get-go. There's sometimes, like in this case, there's sometimes there's sponsors, there's people, then brands that are willing to, you know, give the products um, to test for the sake of the mix loop, and this comes from the fact that I do run a lot of polls and newsletters when I have the time, because it's not, I'm not the best marketing person when it comes to marketing my own self, but I, I do run these polls and newsletters, and it comes often um, um, out as the top three or top five products that I get asked to kind of talk about are usually revolving around major manufacturers and major plugin brands. So I contact those people and then I ask them, you know, if there's any chance to, if there's no demo, to demo it. And if there's a demo to sometimes have an extension if I have to prepare things up, but there's usually 14 days. So it's the most important stuff is unfortunately politics. I have to hold the brand and say, I'll be using that. I'll be talking about it. Or do you agree? Most of these companies are super happy about it. They know, however, and that is a good trait of Fuse Room and myself being Alberto, that um, I, 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 I'm not too orthodox on following um, tutorials and master classes in the sense that I take the menu, explain every single thing in the menu. I don't do that. There's plenty other people that know how to do it. They do it better than me. I would kill myself metaphorically before doing that. So I'm not the right person to just go menu by menu. But there's plenty of tutorials. There's the great manuals in these products that you can use. So who would want to you know, go menu by menu? Some of these products, like for example, Isotope Ozone and Neutron, are products that I do know, that I have used, but they're, that are not sometimes it happens, that are not in my template or in my workflow at 99.9%, .9%, you know, definite factor. Like this is, this is going to be for sure something that I use. Sometimes there's other products that I get asked to demonstrate that are or have been for a very long time products that I've used. But sometimes this is not the case, and that's perfectly fine. I love that. Isotope, Ozone, and Neutron came out first, I think, in the last two weeks poll. The poll that I ran, I think, could be three weeks ago now. But um, that was definitely something people were interested in. And so I said, all right, we demonstrate that. And I'm going to show you how I would approach Ozone and Neutron if I were to mix using, for the sake of this show, just exclusively these plugins, right? This gives us a chance to see what can be done, what can't be done, what I would do differently, maybe. And it is by no means the rules and regulations of how you should approach, in this case, ozone and neutron. But it's a very honest, straightforward approach that is going to put you in the position to be curious about it and to evaluate the moves that I do and maybe, you know, come out with your own stuff. Some things you might like, some things you might hate. I do not care, honestly, anymore. So, uh, I mean, I do care if you do like them. But if you don't, eh, I'm like kind of borderline, not giving a, you know what, you know, um, because it's it's obvious, you know, I might do things that you really don't like, but that's as long as you 
keep your ear to a critical level where you say, okay, I don't like this, but that gives me the idea to do maybe the complete opposite. I succeeded in transferring something that is going to make your records better or more interesting or sound cooler. You're going to make a great record out. It's going to get released. I get to buy it. I get to listen to it and I get to, you know, spend some time enjoying your music. So that's, it's pretty cool. Uh, in the world that we are now, that's, that's actually pretty, pretty cool. I'd say. So I'd really hope that this works. Uh, make that record after these, you know, mix loops. The song that we have today is not a song that I will send in the sense of, hi, this is my song here, have it. I will send three um, songs, I think, from the beginning of this week, and they weren't quite ready for what I wanted to do. So I emailed these people and told them, like, look, the song, you know, is still in pre-production phase. There were, by accident, three songs that are approaching mix ready stage, but they still had a lot of things to be ironed out. So I took instead something that I was suggested from a student actually uh, here in Berlin. And it's, it's a song that was on a mixing contest, I think. It's called Devil's Words and it's by an, an English, I think a band from the UK called Actions. It's a great song. It's a great band, female vocals, straight ahead rock. And, um, you know, modern, top 40, whatever, rock. I, I really like it. And the um, intention of this person, this guy who gave it to me, was that I had some very old mixes that are dating back from, oh God, I think 2005 slash six that were sort of mainstream rockish. And this guy really loves this genre and was like, would you please show me like how you would mix this? I think this was a mix contest maybe one year ago, maybe two years ago. I have, I really have no idea. But I listened to it, liked the songs. I think you can find the stamps around in the internet. So you can even uh, play with them. You can remix it. You can. There's probably mixes who won out there. I haven't listened to them. There's maybe the official mix. This is going to put me to completely naked metaphorically on a musical standpoint i'm not going to be naked on camera but it's really going to expose whatever i would do in a sort of a transparency mode right speaking about headphones last day it's going to be transparent you can take it off you can you can dissect the song you can listen to how other people did it you know and and feel free to then realize that you know i might have done the best thing with the bass maybe not the best with the drums in your taste whatever so but it's a great song to start off with uh, ozone so have I used Ozone in the past? Yes. Have I used Neutron in the past? Nay. I don't know. It's like half there. I, I worked with somebody who used a lot of Neutron too, and, uh, which I, I also heard a couple of days ago that kind of the interface some people liked better, uh, but I am not familiar with that, but I heard about Neutron when it was in you know version two, but I do know Ozone. So sometimes while on the road, on the go, I've used um, Ozone and i really liked it obviously it's an all-in-one solution that works you can do great things with it there's no excuse of really like oh well you know this album didn't really come out great because it's it's just done on the zone you know and so i couldn't do it you know i couldn't reach that high peak no 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 no. i've heard masters of people that have plenty of analog gear and they've used ozone on some radio mixes radio mixes trust me they're good they're awesome so once again, there's no excuse. If you know what to do, the products are good. They're great. Just find what clicks with your mind, you know, train on it, you know, tune your ears on it, done. You know, there's no excuse. However, this is going to be really cool because before um, opening this session, I profiled a record that we're going to use and a single that we're going to use to, you know, pretend we have to approach sort of a reference level from an album or a song that a band has. It's the CD version of a very famous rock band, and the song was super famous. I don't know. It, there's no purpose in mentioning that, but it's just the typical mainstream rock that would probably fall into some area of reference for a band like this. Maybe the original band didn't have it as a reference. I don't care, but it kind of works for our intended purpose. So, what happens here is we are in Studio One. 
lovely studio one and i've only color tagged and color coded the session so we have in brown ladies and gentlemen on the top we have the drums then we have the bass then we have the uh, orange what is it like a mango color this is really mango 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 it's a mango color that are all guitars then we have this sort of like desert camo which is the um, sand color is the lead vocals with a double and then we have backing vocals so before pressing play i already have the feeling from how the waveforms are from how thick they are that this is gonna clip the hell out of the mix bus so the first thing is we're gonna do is that we don't really have a mix bus and mix loop is a great chance to force you to rethink about all the basics that are fundamentally important to work on when you mix so we're going straight to this ugly uncolored track which is our stream which we are not going to use as a mix bus so what we need to do is add a bus channel turn it into a super green and call it mix this thing is going to be our mix bus now everybody here has to in theory go no longer to stream but to mix right so now everything is going here but we're gonna you know take another step forward we're gonna take all the backing vocals and we're gonna add a bus for selected channels so we're gonna make a second bus here which we're gonna call all bgvs and this is now going to mix and mix is going to stream which is allowing you to hear what the heck is going on right now we're going to do the same thing for leads lead vocals now they go to what it's called bus one we drag it here we call it all ldvs and make sure that they're going to mix all right then we are gonna take the guitars we're gonna add a bus for selected channels we're gonna drag it here we're gonna call it all gtrs and then make sure it goes to mix which it does then we're gonna take the bass which is one single track and we're gonna uh, call it again all bass and even if this is a single track we're not breaking the law of you know quarterfinals semifinals finals since talking about football comparison right so we're still gonna do this because if we need to split the bass and create a parallel of some sort we still have good you know routing how it has to be done now there's the drums add bus for selected channel drop it here and call it all drums right save and color now i sometimes like to make it a little darker but i oftentimes forget that this kind of awesome sexy classy green is actually the buses so oftentimes i use the same green which might look stupid for you but it it's actually color coding is a very important part of my life <laughs> at this point in my career so the last one is mix and as long as it's the last one i know that this guy is going to be the last one. so everything is now going here which means that we can even pack folders and that's something that i've started to do lately so we do pack folder we call these drums like this i usually use that and i make it white I usually make it white because I like my folder to be a sort of a color separator. So whenever I see this ugly Berlin weather um, gray, it's actually a folder. So it's the beginning of a folder and that means there's a category of different instruments there. So we're gonna pack folder for also the bass. We're gonna call it bass. And this comes maybe from my latest habit of soundtrack for video game stuff i have so many tracks sometimes that i need to pack folders and folders are awesome because you can say like i want to solo the whole guitars boom done you know it's really great so ldvs white this is by all means not gonna affect the routing this is just a visual representation of how things are gonna be so it's just helping us turning a session into something extremely convenient then there's also the zoom factor which I usually put to tiny at least tiny isn't really yeah it is helping I mean we pretty much have the whole session here we should could go to overview you know I, if you put markers in your work on you know on a mix this is this is pretty good but tiny is kind of cool so you have the names everything super small as usual but readable I'd say you have the colors you have these ugly separators if you have a better color you know you can use that 
Uh, but white usually is something I never use, and so it becomes really, really easy and fast to spot section changes. And sometimes I have strings, in this case I have drums, sometimes I have brass, sometimes I have vocals, all that stuff. So, Control S to save. We have pretty much everything. Now, one thing I like to double check is the level of my uh, master meter here. I like to set it in Studio One to K12. With pre-fader metering, two seconds hold length, I don't really care that much, but I like the K12. So what is K12, 14, and 20? For people that don't know, this is a loudness scale, metering scale, made by uh, God Mode person Bob Katz. He's a mastering engineer and, you know, person that really knows a lot about mastering algorithms uh, whatever dithering digital music you know presentation of digital music to whatever kind of media is you know he's a really a guru of all that stuff so he came out with this sort of scale that was then accepted by a lot of you know people manufacturers formats companies then it's called the k scale as in cats you know his last name so 12 means that the zero the point at which the leds turn from green to yellow or red actually you know the point where you think of like i'm gonna break this piece of gear is actually minus 12 db fs and 14 is zero equals minus 14 and zero equals minus 20. the idea behind this is that if the meter holds a visual representation of how the red is gonna tell you to do not go there and that red is actually not the zero full scale you're gonna stay at a level that is it's is gonna allow plenty headroom so the reason for this is that digital music holds its ground until it hits zero dbfs it's pretty linear but then when it goes to zero dbfs all of a sudden it's like hell the waveform can no longer be described so to make red the color that marks zero dbfs onwards so and zero and up really holds no sense so it's much better if you have green yellow and red that get marked around some values like this and this is the case i usually like k12 because i'm pretty pretty loud usually anyway i mean i like to stay there but you can pick a different format so my faders are all pre-metering here and i don't like the rms i don't really usually use it so this is the thing so now we're gonna listen to it but no because as we said this is all transparent but it's gonna destroy our mix bus so we could we could insert a preemptive limiter so we go to isotope and we do have one so we go to ozone and we go to ozone ozone vintage limiter so we do have one in i think we do have one in maximizer we do have one in vintage limiter I say I also have RX. Okay, so let's do vintage limiter here. The dynamics also have it. I mean, it's a very versatile thing. I'm thinking if I want to have, no, 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 no. I'm going to use vintage limiter, F. Okay, so our journey with isotope has just started, you know, because by accident, we opened up something that is very, very interesting and that I know of a lot of people in radio have been using people. So this guy is, You've heard a lot of it. So we have tube, we have analog, and we have modern. I'll go with analog. And we have a true peak detection. I'm probably going to go true peak. and going to stay at minus one ceiling. But the threshold, I'm also going to set at minus one. Why is that? I don't want to push this upwards limiter up. So the more I lower the threshold, the more things are going to get pushed towards the ceiling. This is a way to get, you know, louder. So I only want to make sure that my headphones do not destroy my ears and then I stay at a safe minus one dB. This could be a Spotify sort of level, right? But if we were to do a CD thing, which I might be tempted to do, we're going to go minus 0 0.2 and we're going to go 0 0.2. Now, 0 0.2 dB FS is very risky, but usually kind of safe. But don't take my word on it, because if you set... It's like a goalkeeper. It's like a goalkeeper, um, you know, getting a very, very fast shot. That's a very good metaphor. So somebody's gonna shoot this ball, you know, towards the goal, and the goalkeeper is gonna get it, catch it, you know. But the shot is so strong, so fast and powerful. There's so much energy that he, like, you know, like a manga or something, you know, like Dragon Ball. He's gonna, you know, just take this energy and go a little bit back. So if he's so too close, if he stands too close to the goal 
line, he might get hit by the ball and fall into it. And that's our clipping level. So if we pass the goal line, the opponent's going to score and we don't want him to score. So if the goalkeeper stays plenty, which is at least minus 0 0.2 from the goal line, when he catches this super fast ball and powerful shot, he's still going to have time to, you know, put his body behind and maybe, you know, just catch the ball and, you know, just absorb the energy without falling back and going into the goal. Even if he falls back, it's not going to be behind the goal line. So 0 0.2 for CD has been thought to be kind of safe. However, some cheap DACs, the DAX, they're usually not able oftentimes to do that. And if you're encoding 23, you're going to clip. So this is going to be enough for talking about the limiter. But, you know, for mixing, I will probably set something at around minus zero two. Uh, True peak makes a difference because it's going to say, okay, what if the goalkeeper catches the ball, but the energy is so strong that he's going to go? behind the goal line so true peak is gonna warn you that even if you're not seeing a red line in the meter you will have clipping in in in, in sample conversion because you have three overs and those three overs are gonna mark a red and you know waveform that the digital algorithm is not going to be able to describe so true peak is more honest to what will really happen because sometimes you might have these two dots and then the you know reconstruction of the waveform brings the waveform outside of you know the zero it's very technical but it could happen so um, some people most of the digital music now gets mastered in true peak most of the cd they don't really care i think they still go minus zero two i do i know i do so then we have character, which is going to control the attack and releases time of the vintage limiter. I usually haven't touched this until the very last stage, so we'll keep it at two. Then we have bypass, gain, match, and all that stuff. So we don't really need to, uh, to you know, do much, but I'll change this name just in case I have to use other stuff, other things. Then, how about we listen to just the drums to make sure we're not overly clipping? I think we will, but... Let's go to the chorus. All right, that's pretty loud already. So I'm telling you, if we go full blast, we're clipping the hell out of it, and it's all in mono. So what I would do is I would gain stage all of these wave files, and these I can do with Mix Tool. It's pretty easy. I'll go probably minus nine, I think, for all this stuff. So what I'm doing is uh, I'm just offsetting minus nine on all of these things. So my tracks effectively have a trim, what I like to call a trim. And this is a you know plugin that you have in every doll. Pro Tools has one, Logic has one, Studio One has one, obviously, uh, because we're using it. And uh, now every single track has a minus nine Thing. So when we go again to the chorus, it kind of worked. Man, that was fast. We're around minus 14, minus 12. We're kind of close to the zero you see here. And that's pretty much mission accomplished. I don't want to do much more of this. This is fine. So there's a lot of tambourine. There's a lot of other things that we're not going to address just right now. Let's listen to the song and start panning things because I really hate this mono. Now, you're gonna see me go pretty much hardcore, left, right, or center, because this is kind of a song that I really like to be kind of LCR, it's called. So let's, let's hear it and then make our assessment. Has spoken to me. 
And then the song ends all of a, all of a sudden. So we do have quite there would be quite a lot to do here. It, it's well played, it's well sung, everything's fine. Sound wise, there would be if we were to take it to a top forty. If I was to take it, if I were to take it, I don't know, to um, to a like a top forty level, I would probably do quite a lot of uh, listening on the snare samples and kick samples and just make sure that I have something very solid for this sort of like top 40 sound. The reason for this is that in fact what I see here is that I just noticed we only have a trigger. So I wonder whether this is actually a kick or this is a trigger because if this is just a trigger we probably need some sort of drum replacement and that's gonna take me two seconds to find a sample which i think will work but uh i will probably i will need two seconds and i don't know if i have do i have a drum replacement thing maybe maybe not on you know if if i don't i have to do it by hand oh this is gonna be fantastic so it works i've rebalanced some things i noticed the following the guitars need to be lower usually by minus 12 more so we could easily br bring these to sort of like minus 18 do a copy, paste, paste. I don't want these guitars to be um, moved in volume from its fader. I want to stay as close as I can to uh, the unity gain of the fader first. So let me isolate guitar, uh, the bass for now and the LDVs and BGVs. Okay, so I'm keeping the drums as mainly there. Let me check the bass. Bass could be even more, right? I say yes. And then when the chorus hits, right, maybe it's this one. Yes, uh, LDV. Oh, 
All right, we have kind of good balance. One thing I would do is, that's usually the first thing I want to check. So usually the, the other thing I want to do is that we have one, let me see the backings. I don't really like to have all of these pairs go to one single BVGs. So this is clearly a pair. This is clearly a pair. So I'll just switch a little bit of the color to like this guy. Then this is also another pair. So we have just a slight color difference to differentiate between two, two, two. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. They're all couples. So I'm going to do the following. I'm going to do add bus. I'm going to call this first one that we had, you remember here, I'm going to call it all BGV1. Then I'm going to call these all BGV2. Then I'm going to do the other for three, and then I'm going to do the other for four. So I want a group that works for me in terms of all of these. I don't want to send them to the same one because they're very specific to the song. I want to have the most control possible on all of this. So I like to have it in separate. I've always done all the records and things uh, in rock, especially like this. And these are going to the stream, obviously. So drums, bass, guitars, vocals, BVG, one, two, three, four. Awesome. So now they're all sent there. Everything's fine. The double I do like in the uh, main lead vocal, but this is how I would do it for now. So in this song, because of the female vocal and because of how the package of the whole thing is done with kick, snare and uh, overheads, bass and main guitars, I might not even start from the lead vocals, although there will be you know, a lot of work to do on the vocals as well. What matters here is that Neutron can already kind of be your go-to for rebalancing things. And I, I read about it and I want to show you how it's, how it's done. So what you do here is that you set, and you can set a Neutron 3, which is the bundle of all of the plugins. You can set the independent plugins or you can set a relay. I'm going to start with the relay so that you see what I mean. So if we open a relay on all of the buses, we have two, four, six, eight buses, and all of these are now simple uh, volume plus width and um, panning as well. So the only thing you need to do is you call these all drums, all drums, you move on to this guy and you call this all bass because these names are going to translate to the main um, the main um, interface that we're going to use which is the mixer system so all ldvs then we have all bgv1 then we have it's a little bit time consuming but it's worth i wish it could inherit the names you know, there's no limit to laziness. So <laughs> uh, that's probably going to be something Isotope's going to have in the mail. So these are all now named. Relay, 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 relay. They all have their names, I think, right? I did it right. So what we do is we put a mix assistant, something like that, should be called like that. Should we put Neutron here. Oh, actually, sorry, Visual Mixer. I put it before the, the limiter. And as you can see here, we have bass, BVGs, drums, um, alphabetical order, BVG 1, 2, 3, 4, drums, guitars, lead vocals. So now they're all set here. But we can tell Mix Assistant to listen to our mix. I'm very curious to do this because it's kind of cool. So this is how you do it. Reset track and volume pan. We haven't touched this. It just guides you through this. So we go begin and he asks you, it asks, I think it's an algorithm. It's not a real person. Um, who is the focus of your mix? And I'm pretty sure it's kind of the lead vocals. So we go begin listening. He's going to listen to the song and we could play the whole song, but I'm going to play until the first chorus. So he's listening to let your song play, let your song play from start to finish. At the end, go click to results to make any tweaks while you wait to check out our tips and tricks for Neutron. So, you know, you can check out the Neutron tips and tricks if you have nothing to do. Usually that's a good time to listen to the song. So.
I've been touching the mix while he was listening. Maybe that will have probably some repercussions. End of first course. Stop. Okay, go to results. This is what he would like to do. He would like to have our focus here, voice, there's no voice, bass, percussion, musical. So he kind of thought he got the results right, but we're gonna go edit classification. Why? Because you see track type might be wrong. So all bass, uh, dude, that's actually our bass. This is actually um, voice. This is actually voice, this is actually voice, this is actually voice. And drums are percussion, and guitars are musical, and lead vocals are focus. So now we go, do we go accept? No, yeah, no. So now we have the possibility of listening to maybe first verse and chorus. I would actually go here. So this would be what he wants us to do. I'm very curious as to which, you know, thoughts the machine had so focus voice bass percussion musical I'm gonna accept the combination of me and what he did. I think I like it. So we can snapshot the hell out of this. And now as you see, there is a difference in positions of all these. So I can hide some elements and I can take, for example, the guitars and I can make them wider or, you know, narrower. Let's try that. That goes to the chorus. Okay. Kind of interesting. I wouldn't go to make them wider right now, but this is probably also my way of mixing things. I would just go with what the mixing board allows me to do but that's something to remember because we can pan things around these are basses but they could have been easily single tracks you know so that's that's cool that's cool the thing that really i wasn't prepared to find out about is that the drums well, we could work on the vocals we could work on the drums first these sometimes these kind of songs start from the drums when i hear like such vocals you know, they're not too bad. But the problem that would mainly be with kick and snare, because <laughs> as I was sus suspecting, these things are not, are not um, kick and snare. At least the kick is clearly a trigger, meaning it's just the trigger. Snare's not that bad but could be a lot better okay let me hear the overheads because that's going to be the real kit right oh, that's, that's not too bad although i really have the the snare on one side right on we do have the snare on one side and i think this is where the imager would come handy so here we really have some mid frequencies that are shifted around i wish i'm gonna try and make these as mono as i can if not entirely mono because i have the kick on one side and the snare on the other so 
here, that's a very cool plug that I've used a lot of times. We have have up to four bands and we can image the, the thing differently. So it could be worth maybe to try and have the highs, like the symbols maybe opened up. Let, let me hear it. Right. So this would be the symbols. It's, it's, it's fairly interesting. I wasn't I wasn't, you know, guessing that we would have had this conversation, but it happens oftentimes that you have the snare on one side and the kick on the other. And usually when you record, you don't want that to be too emphasized because it's going to be a mess to mix. Now, this song, my guess is I would do it listening to kick and snare. I would do it with so such a strong presence of samples in the kick and snare that the real overheads are probably going to be icing on the cake, but it still does matter a lot. I really don't like when the, the imaging is completely sideways with the overheads. So take your time to center the kick and snare along the axis of the drums. Now, it's it's not happening. Obviously, it was recorded in a way that, um, you know, it's not what I would do, it, how I would do it. So how do you fix that? Well, we could try and build two bands of the imager because this is a multi-band imager so it allows us to narrow or or expand the stereo image by frequencies up to four so i made a crossover point to where i can listen to just i only hear symbols pretty much in just a little bit of of snare which is still on the side but what about the low part Kick isn't actually too bad. Kick isn't actually too bad. So Well, I was thinking to do something pretty drastic at first. Let's try and narrow this whole bottom band here, this one. So you see this is band 3 in his opinion, no, 1, whatever. What is this guy? Band one. Ah, we didn't create a different one. Ah, it's off. Okay. <laughs> this is band two, obviously. So band two turned on by this nice, you know, uh, oval dot put line thingy is the yellow and this is the red the colors represent that. So you first select it and then you go. Okay. So it sounds bad, right? But not that bad, I would say. So there's two modes, there's also stereo eyes, which is really nice, I remember using this. There's not much to stereo eyes in our incredibly brought to context mono to stereo, but when we bring in the snare... I would still take this. over this. The reason for it is this. Once you introduce in such a strong rock mix the bass element and the two overpanned 100 and minus 100 guitars, You see how many symbols you already have. There's a lot of them. And for that reason, I really don't think that it would be a problem to do this narrow. It's kind of a trick. What you could do as well is add a reverb here, which I remember uh, Ozone has not. Does not have, right? I don't want to be the guy who says that. So we could reintroduce a reverb. I'm going to take... Uh, I'm gonna take I'm gonna take Phoenix verb to simulate some room reverb for the overheads. So just something small, room, something like a studio one. Let's try and see here. I might work or might not work. Okay, I, I like it. Before.
guitars and basses. All right, I like this. So it works. I kind of reestablished a sort of like a narrow stereo field for the overheads, which I like. But the main issue here is I do not have a kick here. So I have to go look for it and replace it. So bear with me two seconds and we're going to take a look at if I have the samples or not in my drives. So you have my voice listen to it that's not that's not overly bad for you but so we need to replace something like let me see let me see if i do have it i need some search for this mm, i'm very doubtful that i have anything ready in here but maybe 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 never say never Wave libraries, single hits. Well, I do have. I wonder, uh, I thought I had. Hold on. Ha, I do. Aren't you super happy? Let me copy it here. There's three samples that I really love. And I call them top 40 kick and snare. Boom. So, man, that was fast. You weren't expecting me to be that fast, right? I know. So, let's go back to refresh this. And now we have top 40 kick and samples and snare. So, what we have to do here is we have to duplicate track. We'd probably try complete at first, so we have a second one. And what we have to do here is we have to tab to the transient. So I, in Pro Tools, I do know how that works. However, I want to see if there's, there's a tab to transient here, which I haven't really used. Let me see, tab maybe. People, this is why Studio One never fails to amaze. It's the same exact shortcut. So we're gonna keep the trigger here and we're gonna do it incredibly old school. We're gonna take one track here and do duplicate. We're gonna take our top 40 kick and our top 40 kick though two. I have two samples for no reason. These I made with my own hands. I don't know, remember where and when also. So this is our kick and these are second kick. I think I'll take two, just because it's shorter. So I'll take this, maybe fade it. Well, no, I can hear it fading out. Okay, you see here, right, where the kicks happen, I go copy or cut, raise this, take this track away from me, and then we go tab, and then we go paste. Then we go tab. Hold on. There was one way that I used to do it. I'll show you this. This was even better. So we go duplicate, go tab. Does it work? Yes. Okay. Tab, down, paste. Tab, down, paste. Now, we used to play games in the studio <laughs> at how one could see, I failed, uh, at how fast you could be. So I'm gonna resume it to you because this is really important. So why am I doing this when technology is so amazing that you could use that? Well, I really like to do it by hand. It might take some time, but it's way safer and better. And it's gonna take two seconds. To come away. So what you do is you tap to the transient. I'm using no drum replacement plugin, just a simple wave file. Tap to transient, go down, paste. Up, tab, down, paste. Up, down, paste, right? Something like this. And I'm losing the fade sometimes, but that's perfectly fine. And I'm not writing over the previous track. The reason is I can still use it as trigger. See, after a while, oops, after a while, it becomes second nature. 
And this way, you are also making sure that if you have a sort of a, how could I say, like a dirty kick track, you are really filtering out the samples, the kicks, the stuff, the snares, the things you don't want to have triggered. Oftentimes, when I use regular drum replacement plugins, I find out that some of the samples get placed really where they shouldn't. And it's a sensitivity thing. I know you can set the plugin differently. You can custom tune the detector circuit and all that. But there's always, always the need to check your um, drums, your sampled drums. Sometimes I skimmed guilty as charged and I was like, all right, this is perfect. I just took a quick look at it. And then the band comes in and there's a snare hit instead of a kick hit, for example, right? I really don't like when that happens. So if you do it by hand, like I'm doing now, you can verify, even if this is a very, very clean sample triggered uh, thing, you can verify whether or not, you see, we reached, what did, did we reach first course? Maybe no. Um, you can verify that you're really putting um, the samples where they have to be. So see, we reached, I think kind of, I got to first course. And also you see, I'm putting a longer sample and it gets overlapped. No issue here, that's fine. I'm gonna reach end of first chorus and, uh, and then we're gonna stop. And we would play games at how fast um, we could be. <laughs> and yes, that's a stupid game, but it's fun. So there's a speed level at which you're comfortable. See, for example, sometimes you mess up, open the scratch pad. And if you accelerate too much, you probably fail, right? And that's why we used to make, you know, averaging <laughs> of the kicks and stuff. So I think, you know, it's studio time, people. We have to invent something. So kick. Right? So kind of works. I would have never thought that I would do this live. But that's the beauty of music production, people. So we do the same thing for, this is our kick uh, SMP. We're gonna create a second track. We duplicate, so we're inheriting everything we had, samples, uh, levels, plugins, and all that. And we're gonna call this snare SMP. Uh, why is that? Because I wanna replace the snare as well. By all means, yes. So I'm putting my own single snare sample here. And I think, all right, that's kind of a strong hit. I'm gonna keep this, I'm gonna cut it, right? There's a lot of reverb here, I'm gonna save. And we'll do the same thing, we have to reach bar 37. So we go here, we go down, paste. Then up, top to transient, down, paste, down, paste. And that's how we do it. It's a single sample, it's, see, for example here, Ha <laughs> that's fantastic. So what is going on here? This is a tom. So we don't really need that hit. So we have to keep that in mind that it is a transient, but it's something we don't want. So see, if you do it by hand, you already have it. Sometimes they're small. Maybe there's an automatic function to it, but I'd like to teach you this way because if, if something happens and the dough you're using does not have a function that you're aware of, that you don't know, that I don't know, that you don't feel comfortable to use shortcuts on, this is gonna save you. This is as manual as it can get, people. So take your time, if you need to be slower, you know, with time, is this a double hit? Yes. So maybe here we'll do, what do we do? Well, we could fade it, we could do various things. I'm probably not gonna do it all. I'm only gonna take the second hit. And here I'm, I'm gonna go by hand, doesn't really matter. Down, by. So here, let me go zoom out a little bit. Down, paste. Check that you're not having false positives. In this case, um, Studio One is very good at knowing that we have hit for, oh, this one he got wrong, okay? We skip it. 
but it's very good at detecting main transients. So as long as we do this, we have to reach bar. You remember what was it? 37. So here, down, here, boom, yeah, top, down, top, down, top, down, top, down, top, down. Don't think about it. It just becomes autopilot after a while. You know, it's like I'm playing piano, playing a part for 300. You now, if you're playing hip hop or rap or something, you have to play the same part over and over. It will drive you nuts. Okay, this is a sort of a double hit detected. We don't do that. So, yes, it's more time consuming for sure, but it's as precise as possible. Also, there's one final thing I really like about this approach. And that is that the detection algorithm, meaning the tab, when you press tab, the algorithm decides whether uh, that's the right transit or not. You're using one single detection algorithm. You're not using a plugin, then the detection algorithm of your DAW. We're using just one detection method. We press tab and the computer uses the same algorithm, might be right, wrong. Some of the algorithms like to be a little bit on the late side, Others like to be on the uh, early side. So it doesn't really matter as long as you use the same one and then you can offset it with the inspector or something. For example, here we have a delay. So we can set a delay for the track so that everything that happens here is in grid, but it's also being delayed early or late. So uh, that's very convenient. For example, Logic has it, other DOS have it, so Ableton Live has it. They all have it. So, Chorus. Let me put a marker where the chorus happens because I think it's pretty much here. So now you can hear we definitely have a better drum. I'm sorry, I mean, I didn't, truth be told, I, I told you I don't open these sessions beforehand. So this time we got surprised, like, oh my God, we don't have real um, snares and we don't have fake snares. We have just triggers. The snare is usable, but so this was our kick. <laughs> That's clearly just the trigger. So we're not gonna use this guy. We're actually gonna remove this track. We're gonna re-enable this just to show you what we had. But now we have this, like the copied kick. So we loop it. And that's our kick now. That's our snare. That's our overhead. That's our original snare. I'm voting for removing the snare, but I'm gonna show you what I would do just so you know how to work this out. But let's put the bass in. And let's put guitars in. Now, don't you try and tell yourself that the song hasn't changed that much. It completely became from this thing is never going to go anywhere. Well, of course, there's just a single pick, 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 kick trigger. There's missing parts and stuff. It became something that immediately kind of sounds like, oh, this thing's so mixed. Why is that? Because we're having good kick and snare samples that are very typical of this genre uh, being laid over or under kind of you know with along with bass that kind of works and guitars that are very very nice sounding for this genre so all of a sudden our ears kind of go like i know this i've heard this on the radio so did we need all those open overheads no sounds kind of fine to me um do we need the original snare i'm gonna tell you why we might i usually try and incorporate a little bit of that but i noticed that they kind of You know, that really doesn't work. So what I'm going to try to do, I'm going to try and flip face on the original snare. I, I don't think that makes any worthwhile change. So we could try and do a second thing. Let's fire up our ozone. Hello, isotope. We could use some equalizer 
and try and take out some of the honkiness on the 400. Notice I'm not listening to just the original snare, snare and sample. And actually, you know what? Kick as well. There we go. I would say this is not the snare, but 614, 620, it's the room. So now we have it locked down. Right? One, I, I really love this EQ. There's no need for me to explain it that much, right? You can switch analog and digital. You can look at the interface. You can resize this dude. I mean, come on. It's just what digital looks like in our minds, you know, when we were born. Okay, that's a little bit too much. But if you go out and click or you solo the band, you can listen to, right, to the single part where you're actually working on. And I really like this because it makes editing so fast. Now, without moving this, we go gain down. So now I'm trying to see if there's a way to kind of get some more detail of the snare without, you know, putting stuff in solo. Is there anything that the snare, the real one, is able to give to the whole equation of the drums? Honestly. Honestly, I would probably ditch this guy. I'm not totally hating it, but I think in the equation of the thing, it doesn't doesn't really need that much. It's a very strong um, song in terms of sampling and kick and snare, so it goes. I'm gonna use the overheads though, and I'm gonna try and flip phase on them and make sure that these guys work in uh, context with kick. Now on headphones, I don't really hear much of a difference and probably they're so different in content that the two things don't work, but do check it out. Let me try and crank the volume and see. Honestly, I don't really, really know. I think what we need is just drop the volume on the overhead. Try and keep it here and then we'll see. What I kind of think we could do is we could use an EQ on the, on, on the um, overheads to kind of tame the high hand a little bit. Please. I find them to be a little bit bright, and now I want to investigate if there's anything I can add. I'm gonna free up some 500-ish, because I already know that this is gonna be busy, and, uh, and that's okay. So, we do have sort of a package here. Let me bring these two guys down and let me check uh, toms. Now, the toms are open, meaning this thing is gonna resonate all the time. Now, oftentimes I do gate these. There's a lot of energy here that I'm not totally sure I want. Right. Also, they don't really sound super awesome, I would say. So I'm going to try and see if I can. Uh, well, there's a gate. Look at that. Let's gate these people. Why not? I mean, there's a gate. So we're presented with the um, with the preset name. So let's try and see a place where these things happen a lot. OK, well, they do happen here. 
this is kind of a lower okay uh, so ratio attack hold release I this is my first time using it so let's investigate how this is gonna work so I think this is the open close right right really easy to use Now, it looks like they're pretty consistent. So we're using these. I don't want hold and the ratio as well. We could go very... I like sometimes to be extreme on the ratio and very... It's a, it works. It works really great. We could do this gate by frequencies. So it's a multiband. Whenever you see this plus, you know Isotope is up to bring you multiband stuff. But I think it works. So I'm going to do what's... You know, the Grammy winning engineer move. Copy paste, it works. And, you know, there's an art in copy pasting. So let's see this, Tom 2. Now, somebody destroyed the mic here. It sounds like the microphone was dropped on the Tom and like it's sitting on the skin. But it's working. So it's gating. I like really long releases, but let me, let me. Just take a listen to snare, kick, and sample. Let me remove colors from these two. Just because, you know, we're not using them. Now, in the equation of things, it's pretty horrible. I know I'll kind of be able to, to live with that. Let's try, let me see if we can... I would probably use samples of these as well. But... I want to try and see how much I can fix this. There's a lot of bad stuff. Let me see, did I put it on two? Yes. So we, I mean, we could do this. Come on. Come on, it's not that bad. <laughs> Could be much worse. Let's try and filter this guy. Uh, this one I don't need, but this, yes. Honestly, I don't mind. It was like this before. Pew, pew. And now we've kind of fixed it. I mean, it's a starting point. Let's see this. Pew pew. So let's copy these over, but I'm not, come on, I'm not gonna copy paste. Let me reset default. Pew pew. I still think it's gonna be like it. Yeah. Like much brighter. And then here. And then here. Oh, no. Sorry. Band one. Let me find them. Come on, it could work. Now we're gonna try and... Yes. They're not, they're by far not the best things ever, but we're gonna set a reverb and maybe we're gonna work on to that. Let me try and do this. Is there a symbol? No. So they have some printed reverbs, but they're not really using them. So I'm gonna create a sand an effects channel here and I'm gonna call these drums verb one I assume it's gonna be one so let me still take my uh, reverb of the day if I can type right you know right and we're gonna do I'm gonna do large chamber or I'm probably gonna do stage or something large plate I remember there was percussion, vocal, ADR, and post, live recording, small gallery, cello, large hall, cathedral. I would like to give it a sort of a large hall, maybe. 
sort of a feeling of being in a stadium, sort of. So sense, I could put it actually on the actual toms. You know what? Let's try it like this first, like proper people. Holy, that, that already works. It's a little bit maybe too long. Let me copy just to make sure that I don't miss it. Well, three seconds, yes. Let's go for one-ish. Come on, it could be worse. Now, because of the diffuse field that this thing is creating, it doesn't really matter to go entirely um, 100. I like 32. Let's stop there. Pretend my ears are still fresh. I like it. So we have an effect. Let me tune it as a yellow guy because that's my effects are usually like that. Or blue or cyan, cyan. Even worse. Even worse has to be a color that stands out and we're not going to send it to steam or uh, to stream we're going to send it to mix just so that we have right it's missing the toms are missing some bite so because of ozone i think i'm gonna use some exciter now the exciter is still multiband so what we're gonna do is we're gonna probably try and focus on the whole mix I think I might try on the whole, on the whole thing. Maybe just yes, yes, yes. Let me try this. Okay, could work. Let me try a higher band here, for example, and put it like uh, worm tube dual triode retro retro. Okay without yes that's exactly what i wanted so copy i'm making them brighter without them being eq'd i'm and you know exciting these areas right and now i can even lower the volume here okay tambo man this this one was tough i remember this guy was not the best in the bunch. Oh. See how hard drums reverb is working? We have it. Do we excite it? Probably. Without. With. Man, come on. This is already awesome. I'm using like a low to mid area in, in blue and then the red is just the highs and it's giving it that kind of saturated tape feeling, you know, low quality tape. I think it's, it's working great to make the drums kind of more real. I think this is going to work well on the bass as well, which I'm going to introduce now. Let's try. Drums are kind of done. Do we um, do we work on the mix bus on the drums? I would probably go dynamics, vintage compressor. Yes, you, vintage compressor. That's just an excuse for me. I want to try the vintage compressor and I want to try the vintage tape. So, um, drums comp. Let me try and see. So let's bring in well the whole drums. We haven't tried loops and stuff. Okay. You know what? The um, the overheads could use some exciter, or maybe you know what? Vintage tape. Let's try the tape on this anyway immediately because fifteen. Less emphasis and driving. Really, have you heard it? 
it's kind of subtle, but I really like it. And it's making it a little bit less kind of shiny, but in a different way. So we said vintage compressor. Uh, let's go for an SSL kind of approach. Four to one, one, let's try. Release 100. And balance, smooth uh, mode, I think it's balanced. Could be good. Okay. So he's auto gaining. Okay, we're gaining some. I kind of like it. If we want to get to a loud level, we probably must have that one millisecond compressor, like sort of SSL, how they do it, because it's kind of snappier enough to keep the transients down. It still feels present, but it's not going to make our limiter go nuts, you know, because of, of how sharp and fast the transients are. So, bass. What do we do with bass? We go vintage compressor on this guy. Definitely first vintage shaper. Man, there's so many cool things to use. So let's try balanced. Now there's no mix control here. Am I lying to myself? Yes. So if I want to do a parallel, I kind of have to do it differently. So here we'll go sort of like uh, DBX ish. Let's try. Or maybe, you know what? I'll go. Yes, I'll go sort of sort of LA to A first. Let's try like a kind of a fast attack and kind of a slowish. I think I actually 50. I'm talking to myself, it's fantastic. Now, now there's there's a compliment that was given months ago, and it was like, oh, Albert, in your rock songs, the bass just never gives up. It's always there to support and stuff. And I thought it's now happening with this, but I guarantee you I don't usually use the vintage compressor, which is actually now bass comp. Uh, bass comp, yes. I don't usually use this, but you, you, when things work, they do work. I put it to smooth, 10 to 1, 0 0.8. These values yes i kind of got from how vintage gear kind of does work or, or, or things that have worked for me in the past but it's it sounded good before but it's now so stable and so it's louder okay but it doesn't When the compressor is disengaged, we still have that, you know, transient reaching you, and then the level drops, and so the note becomes harder to to use as a driving force for the harmony. So these are really like. Fantastic. Now, I would do a parallel of this and kind of over excite some of the mid frequency areas however i've noticed that ozone has um, a vintage exciter in multiband so with a mix control so we need to find out which area of the frequency spectrum is the bass as the grit in the headphones now what am i referring to i'm referring to rock songs through small um, headphones like earbuds you know something like that earphones if you have listened to rock music on the, the metro on the tram whatever on the subway tube you know no matter how you call it it's always the same thing and um, you are used to hearing that kind of grungy gritty bass because you might not have that much sub from small headphones and so they they mix it in a way that you have that driving grit grinding force from the bass so we keep everything as is we keep the guitars we keep the bass we keep the drums but we're gonna go and solo a frequency area where we can tell um the we could, we could actually use an eq for this let me bring up uh, the Vintage EQ, okay, okay, let's do Vintage EQ. Uh, oh no, I don't want to do Vintage EQ. 
I want something that I can carry around and go bleep, bloop, bleep, ozone 9 EQ. So we're going to take one band and we're going to go around and surf for an area where we feel the headphone, small headphone grit of the bass. <laughs> One K. I nominate 300 and 1K as the areas where we want to work on. So let me bypass this because we're not going to do it in the excite in the EQ. We're going to do it in the exciter. So we're going to take one band here. And let's find out the crossover points for this. We want to work on something like here. Let's try and hear this. This is our whole base. That's fine. And then we had this area. Awesome. You hear it, right? You hear that grid? Let me hear the one. Let's leave these bands alone and work on these two. Ooh, analog people, you hear it just sounds right to me. Worm also kind of works, but I would go analog. Let's try and go 15 and then mix it in. Okay, okay, okay. And then we go with this red band and we'll go triode. Let me try and find maybe there's something. Retro is not that bad, but I think I have to lower the crossover. So let me copy these. Let's leave it like this. It's not 100% as I wanted it, but I, I think it sounds really nice. Really nice. Maybe a little bit less amount. Well, there's something that wants me to just crank it up just a little bit. And, and that's very different from how I usually mix stuff because here, if this was a record that I do and record the band and mix in and master it, I would have a lot of outboard already going on and parallels and things and stuff. But because of the mix knobs or sliders in a zone, you are kind of doing parallel processing anyway. So that's pretty good. Now there's a third guitar, which is a center guitar. Now question is whether or not we want to use it because this is gonna mask our center drums and bass. So let's try it out. Kind of works, kind of works, but I wanna show you what I would do here. I would go with um, Ozone, Vintage compressor, is this multiband? Nope. That's three. Okay, there's an EQ and compressor. I want a multiband compressor, which I think, I think the so-called dynamics kind of does. Uh, we could do it with compressor. We could actually do it with an EQ as well, dynamic EQ. But what I want to find out is the frequency spectrum at which the, the area of frequencies where my guitar is kind of messing up the image of my drums and bass. It's probably somewhere here in the middle. Or for example, we don't want maybe the center guitar to be this. We have to kind of sacrifice this a little bit. So not, not too much but we have to make sure that 
it's staying there. Okay, adaptive release, all wet. There's a lot of controls we don't really need here. Okay, let's bring in the, you know, back of the whole drums and bass. And let's find out where we really like some of the areas here. We could even add one more. Okay, now I'm gonna try and, and gain this orange, then the red, and then the green, and then we find out whether we, we kind of think this guitar is doing a lot or not enough. The areas where it's gonna pop up might be of support, or they might be bothering our the rest of the instruments. This sounds pretty good. Let's find out this. That also sounds good. That's now becoming a problem. How about this guy? Okay, okay. I think the crossovers are set fine. Let me try and and compress it. Gentle. Can you hear it now? Yeah, I can. Before, the part was kind of buried somewhere, but now we're kind of sculpting the guitar to have that tone, the, the, the harmonics, where they needed to be. So it's now contributing to the mix. So we are recentering the overall tone of the record with one track that you would have thought, well, it's a third guitar, man. Where is this gonna fit? It's a center guitar for sure. It's a typical tri how is it called? Tri track, tree tracking, tri tracking. So it's three guitar tracks, and the center one is meant to create that sort of of excitement. Let me double check that I actually got the panning right. Although I like it, so I'm gonna keep it low, low, okay, right, and the center. So you hear before it was like this, and now. It works, it works, and as long as there's no vocals yet, haha. <laughs> so I make the administrative decision to not touch the uh, G3 and G4. These people are our most amazing and awesome guitars, and we're not gonna touch these. We might change color on them just because they're great. So these are our main guitars. And uh, it's time for the vocals, I would say. Let's try and see what we can do with vocals. Um, what am I gonna do here? I might take just the lead and talk about the lead alone. You are the one. You make me feel like now it makes absolutely zero sense to do it in solo uh, without the mix, but I want to show you some sort of things that I think I would do anyway. I would take a vintage limiter first, and I would go analog, and I would try and see. You you make me feel like this. You are the one screaming, you hypocrite. Missing puzzle piece. Come and fill me in. The it's funny that I, I don't see the wave, but I can hear it. You are the one. You make me feel It's probably very you low. So we could do this, I think, maybe. You are the one. No. Well, I should be displaying, I think. You well, I don't care. I can use my ears, right? You 
make me feel like this You are the one screaming you hypocrite Missing puzzle piece Come and fill me in The devil's words have spoken to me Okay Kind of like it. Uh, what else? Um, now that it's kind of limited to a point where I do like how it's working, I'm going to try and just do a sort of a EQ kind of thing. Now, now, I'm going to do vintage EQ. Why not? You well, actually, you know what? Let me try the vintage, the maximizer. Now, the maximizer should be the sort of high grade finished you are the one you make me well no it's not reading it anyway so it doesn't matter let's do vintage eq you are and this is sort of a pull tick ish thing so we might go 100 we might go i don't know three let me try the three you are the one you make me feel like this you are the one screaming you hypocrite missing puzzle right so you try and this you not much lows going on. Let me try you eight. You are the one. You make me feel like this. You this is a mid cut, so we might want to try. I don't know three, maybe five hundred. You are the one. You make me feel like this. You are the one. Screaming, you hypocrite. Well, it makes sense and doesn't really make sense to do do this, but. You are the one. You make me feel like this. You. Okay, so the first thing I notice is that before doing this, I'm actually getting a... Oh, I messed it up. I messed it up. I removed the wrong one. Okay, so the first thing I'm getting is S's. So, first, let's get back our vintage compressor and let's get back to, what was it, minus three, minus four, sort of. You are the one. You make me feel like this. Awesome. However, we're going to go with a dynamics module. I don't remember if there's a sibilant module. No, but you can you can use this, of course. You go S. You are the one. You make me feel like this. You are the one. Screaming you hypocrite. Missing puzzle piece. Come and fill me in. The devil's words have spoken. You see how I, I really find it funny that he changes the crossover and it works. Good, good boy. So, uh, limiter. Here, let's compress you this guy. You are the one. You make me feel like this. You are the one. Screaming, you hypocrite. Missing puzzle piece. So this is basically going to be our um, de-esser. You are the one. You make me feel like this. You are the one. Screaming, you hypocrite. Missing puzzle pay. I think it's I think it works. And now let's just give it a little bit of EQ. Just just so we find some areas where we didn't like how he sounded. You are the one. This area is kinda You are the one screaming you hypocrite. Missing puzzle piece. Come and fill me in. The devil's words have spoken. So I would just rebalance it like this. Now, if there's more that we need to, to shape, we can use a dynamic EQ for that. Let me try tape now. It's going to be quite a lot of... You are the one. You make me feel like this. You are the one. Screaming, you hypocrite. Let's try this. Missing puzzle piece. Come and fill me in. The devil's words have spoken to me. You are the one. You make me feel like this. You are Now, it's definitely on the clean kind of side. Let's try 7.5. You are the one. You make me feel like this. You are the one. Screaming, you hypocrite. Missing puzzle piece. No, no, no. It's it's cool. It's giving it body and it kind of works. Now I need quite a lot of, of, of parallels. So I'm going to add an effect. We're going to send these to mix. We're going to call these LDV, LDV comp one. 
and we're probably gonna do a second comp so ldv comp one and then we're gonna do add effects channel and we're gonna call these ldv comp two and i need some sort of maybe exciter or something like that which it really works well so we go add effects and this would probably be obviously in the template if you use a lot of dist distortion okay so these go to mix these go to mix these are gonna be our ugly cyan color and we're gonna go compressor one so compressor one is vintage compressor why not we're gonna set these as we would do on a 1176 so i think it's gonna be sharp for no reason the attack is always pretty fast release also as close as we can to i have no idea when so auto gain i disable and this is the detector circuit which we might skim on the lows let's try this so first compressor one you are the one you make me feel like this you are the one screaming you hypocrite missing puzzle piece come and fill me in the devil's words have spoken to me you are the one you make me feel like this we filter a little bit of these lows because then we but you are the one you make me feel like this you are the one screaming you hypocrite missing puzzle piece come and fill me in the devil's words have spoken to me okay i also emphasizing a little bit of the highs it's okay let's do the second one the second one i'm just gonna destroy maybe with smooth i think i like kind of smooth but let me see this you are the one you make me feel like this you are the one screaming you hypocrite missing puzzle piece come and fill me in the devil's words have spoken to me balanced maybe you are the one you make me feel like this you are no smooth i kind of like i gotta say and then we're gonna you know tailor sprinkle what is it to taste as some engineers say and uh exciter where's the exciter here we're gonna use these as a single band, just single one. You are the one, you make me feel like this. You are the one, screaming you hypocrite. Missing puzzle piece, come and fill me in. The devil's words have spoken. I kinda liked retro. You are the one, you make me feel like this. You are the one, screaming you hypocrite. I actually think that if we undo, right, single band kind of works. Single band works. But I wish I could kind of emphasize some highs. So I'm going to go EQ and I'm going to do this. You are the one, you make me feel like this. You are the one, screaming you hypocrite. Awesome. Missing puzzle piece. Come and fill me in. So we're gonna tailor this on the drums. There's one last thing that I wanna do. Let me just bring this and this is why overview works great. Even minimal works great. <laughs> minimal is a little bit too small. Okay. So uh, this we're gonna do a short reverb. Definitely need a short reverb. So plus L add effects promise this is the last one but it always takes a little bit of so verb one always takes a little bit of time because there's no template this is done for real people so okay and reverb we're gonna do in mean, our reverb of the day is phoenix verb so we go short small plate and uh, small vocal plate there's tiny vocal plate there's sudden snare sucking my tight snare i think tight snare i really liked or sizzle. There was one that I really liked for. You are the one. You make me feel like this. You. I kind of, I kind of think this is awesome, but it's not the reverb I wanted. I'm not the. It's not the reverb I'm looking for. Okay, 
but I think we're gonna do a second one because man, that one sounded good. So we keep it. Sometimes you find, you know, things that are cool and uh, we keep it. So a small plate steel, but on a kick, I think tight snare. You are the one, you make me feel like this. There we go, there we go. I remembered this, this was fun. You are the one, you make me feel like this. You are the one, screaming you hypocrite. Missing puzzle piece, come and fill me in. The devil's words have spoken to me. Okay. You are the one, you make me feel like this. You are the one, screaming you hypocrite. Missing puzzle piece, come and fill me in. The devil's words have spoken to me. Short plate delayed. Awesome. So how about the second one? You are the one. You make me feel like this. Send these to mix. You are the one. Screaming you hypocrite. Missing puzzle piece. Come and fill me in. The devil's words have spoken to me. Yes, why not? Kind of works. So we have it. We have pretty much the package of what we want. I'm going to try and see the double. You are the one. Now, issue with the double is obviously that it's sharing some sort of compression and stuff, but I, I might use some effects on it, but I'm going to use something completely, completely different. Let's go tape first. 7.5. You are the one. You make me feel like this. You are the one screaming you hypocrite missing puzzle piece. I like it. It's already you hear it, right? It's already kind of different in the sense of how um cool this is. So now we do the same thing. We try and find out where there's parts that we like about these vocals. You are the oh, did I open the no, I don't want the neutron compressor. I want the ozone dynamics right yes ozone dynamics so three here you are the one you make me feel like this you are the one screaming you hypocrite missing puzzle piece come and fill me in the devil's words have spoken so we do have a lot of bands that do not do much like you you make me this low part doesn't really you are the one. You doesn't really sorry you are the has a lot of halo on it right so you again are the one. you make me feel like this you are the one screaming you hypocrite we don't need this let's go to solo this you are the one you make me feel like this you and now we do have some kind of texture on this, which I like. You are the one. You make me feel like this. You are the Now we go here. You are the one. You make me feel like this. You are the one. Screaming you hypocrite. Missing puzzle piece. Come and fill me in. The devil's words have spoken to me. Okay, this has to sound like a double, not like almost like a second person, but not quite. Because it's I think it's still her. You are the one, you make me feel like this. You are the one screaming you hypocrite. Missing puzzle piece. Come and fill me in. The devil's words have spoken so Ah, oh, nice. So it kind of opens up. Speaking about opening up, you remember that the imager is able to do imaging by frequencies. So if we pick one section, you are the one. You make me feel like this. You are the one. Screaming you hypocrite. Missing puzzle piece. Come and fill me in. The devil's words have spoken to me. Okay, kind of thought I was I would get more, but you are the one. 
Ah, you right. make me feel like this. You are the one screaming, you hypocrite. How about this? Missing puzzle piece. Come and fill me in. The devil's worst head. This we keep down. Let me try this band. You are the one. You make me feel like this. You are the one screaming, you hypocrite. Let's try. I was I had this guy in solo. Let's try and do this as well and just go full mono, mono, and these two full stereo. You are the one. You make me feel like this. You are the one. Screaming, you hypocrite. Missing puzzle piece. Come and fill me in. The devil's words have spoken. So I kind of like it that way. Orange opens, red doesn't, and then the blue opens again. So we don't have compre much compression going on, um, except for the multiband. I would go vintage compressor on this and you are the one. go pretty you tough are on it. The one. You make me feel like this. You are the one screaming, you hypocrite. Missing puzzle piece, come and fill me in. The devil's words have spoken to me. Now it's so stable that we can try and bring in the rest. So kick, you are snare. The one. Okay, vintage tape for sure. I also want, yeah, a lot of tape here. You are the one, you make me feel like this. You are the one, screaming you hypocrite. Missing puzzle piece, come and fill me in. The devil's words has spoken to me. Now we're gonna use the exciter on the longer reverb, which I think it's kind of a little bit too long. Let me find out this guy. You are the one. You make me feel like this. You are the one. Screaming. Nice. Okay. Let's. I made it completely different. There are two short reverbs now, but I want to emphasize an area here. You are the one. You make me feel like this. You are the one. Screaming, you Missing puzzle. Okay, I would probably drop lead one and lead two into the compressor. You are the one, you make me feel like this. You are the one, screaming you Missing puzzle piece, come and fill me in. The devil's words has spoken. I wouldn't want it to be too sharp, but there's some need for it to be like that. For sure. Now, what I like to do here to keep my ears unbiased or as unbiased as possible is I'm going to take the drums away and the bass and I'm going to go lead and guitars. So before we had lead, bass, drums, now we're going to go lead guitars. We already know that drums, bass and guitars did sound cool to our ears before, you know, attempting at doing the vocals. So now... It's fantastic. I really love this method of working because it's just, it gives you immediately the unbiased idea of like, is this appropriate? For example, the reverbs now kind of feel weird. Like they kind of feel different than I expected. And there is a little bit more lows that I would like from my vocals. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go, um, now I could go, let's try vintage EQ. I have no idea. Let's try here. But let's... Yeah. Has 
So it's tough to use a fixed EQ as I was expecting because it's never, actually this was on drums. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Was it right? No? Yes? What did I do? Oh, I took, took something. <laughs> I took the compressor off, but the undo function helped me out. That's good. So the vocals have these, this sort of low halo that I want, but I don't want it to be there all the single time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try the dynamic EQ. So I can find out, can find a band of both where I like how it sounds. Which is what I was uh, looking for in the vintage EQ, but now we can make it a little bit brighter, a little bit wider, and we can go down here and we can tell it to kind of expand when we like, you know, this EQ to expand so that the low frequency is going to jump and dance around instead of being fixed. And it's going to give us better impression of a warmer vocal without being overwhelmingly huge, you know, and just bloated. And while we're at it, we can even touch the S's a little bit. Maybe we're post everything here, so it might not work. You are the one. You make me feel That's definitely the area of the S's, right? So we try and do this. So there's proportional cue. There's a lot of stuff that we can do. We can push it up or down. You If we go up, it goes down, you know, that's a cool thing. <laughs> I love it. You are the one. You make me feel like this. You are the one. Screaming hypocrite. Missing puzzle pains. Come and fill me in. The devil's voice has spoken so So we're looking for a dis that, that makes the whole EQ go down. You are the one, you make me feel like this. You are the one, screaming hypocrite. Missing puzzle pains, come and fill me in. The devil's voice has spoken so many. You are the one, you make me feel like this. I kind of like it. I gotta say, I like it. It's detailed. It's kind of bright, I know, but I usually have it kind of bright in these headphones and then it kind of feels better in other ones. So I wouldn't sweat over it too much. Now, this setting would be awesome to also try direct on the vocal, maybe just a little bit less because it's the, the, the you know, this, this thing here. You just drop it here. We disable the three. We don't need these other bands. We're just gonna use the same exact one, but maybe just a tad less. You are the one. You make me feel like this. You are the one. Screaming hypocrite. Missing puzzle pains. Come and fill me in. Well, I don't think I will, you know, but because it alters the sound completely, so it's probably not just one-to-one -one copy paste but kind of works now how about we do bass you are the one you make me feel like this you are the one screaming hypocrite missing puzzle pains come and fill me in the okay. devil's voice has spoken so Okay, I like it and it needs to be there, so that's why I put a limiter. Now, the bass, the bass, the bass. I kind of like it, but I wish it had kind of a little bit of, I would say, maybe grit. So let's try and just EQ it, I think. Not excited, but just EQ it, just a tad. You are the one, you make me feel like this. You are the one, screaming hypocrite. Missing puzzle pains, come and fill me in. The devil's voice has spoken so many. Oh, 
help. Okay, kind of like it. Guitars. Let's EQ the guitars, maybe with the dynamic EQ, maybe, just because what we're having here is that we can find an area where the guitars kind of cover the vocals, although they're really nice sounding. You are the one, you make me feel like this. You are the one, screaming you missing puzzle. So this area clearly makes it hard harder in a way for us to listen to the vocal so we're gonna do this you are the one you make me feel like this you are the one screaming you hypocrite missing puzzle things come and fill me in the devil's voice has spoken so So it kind of works, but we have to work on the attack and release, which we can because we open this and we go. You are the one. You make me feel like this. You See how faster it is? You can't really tell what it that is now in effect there working. And this one instead we make kind of relaxed and fast release as well. You are the one. You make me feel like this. You Come on, come on, it works. Let's bring in now the drums and take the bass out. And then we have kind of all the combinations that kind of gave us, you know, some, some weird references that tricks our ears into rethinking what the song would sound like in its entireness. Okay, without bass, I wish it had just a little bit more oomph. So mm, EQ. EQ, dynamic EQ, real EQ, EQ. You are the one, you make me feel like this. You are the one, screaming you hit the grave. Missing puzzle pain, come and fill me in. The devil's voice has spoken to me. You are the one, you make me feel All right, now we have to do the backings real fast, but then I'll show you what Neutron could have done or could do at this stage. And didn't you realize how you could have worked on the mix as well? You are the one. You make me feel like this. You are the one. So now, because we have them here, we're just going to use compressor, right? Dynamics. Let's actually go vintage compressor and then it's gonna make it easier. Vintage compressor. You are the one, you make me feel like this. You are the one, screaming missing puzzle. You are the one, you make me feel like this. You are the one, screaming missing puzzle. Then, okay, then let me save. Then we go to an EQ first. I probably want to EQ first. Hold on. Uh, ozone equalizer. And I'm going, you know, module by module. That's fine. You are the one. You make me feel like this. You are the one. Screaming. Now the timing's not super tight, but it's okay. 
Okay, then we close this. Hold on, then we go to tape. We're probably gonna use the same sort of Okay, then we're gonna use uh, maybe verb two. Although some people don't wanna use the verb. You are the world. You make me feel like this. Okay, then we limit it. Vintage limiter. Go. I usually like to do this like a DB or so. And then we go like this. Okay, I would honestly even go more for it. So I would make a second compressor. So this guy here, the one that crushes, we make a second effects channel. We duplicate this guy here and we call this BGV comp one because we want a different kind of effect. And then we take BGV one, we put it here. And now we have a second super powerful compressor. You know Yes, it's perfect. Now we can lower this. You the you make me feel See how they're more filling in the environment? You the Before we had it here. You the it's it sounds like not not too professional. This kind of sounds a lot better to me. You the you sounds just like you know, and that's parallel compression, just bringing in so much detail. Remember, it's a 20 to 1, like super, super strong, heavily detailed, um, sharp compressor. Did I put it on sharp? No, on smooth. Okay. Well, it sounds good. Um, this template's going to work for the other um, backings, although we only reached up to the samples in uh, BBG1. Kinda sounds cool. However, what we're gonna do is we go duplicate tracks full. We erased these up until here, right? We cut them, sort of like a tape behavior, right? We go here. We we take this and we just move these two here because these two are gonna be the same but not quite. The bricks will slowly crack and fate will soon show itself. I wanna... Ah, okay, but. <laughs> course hold on hold on cut here let's keep this we have to build a different bus for this so we add a bus we put it next to it and i like to call it all bvg 1b for example that would work that would work so we send this to mix we copy everything we had here here and I'm gonna tell you why then re, you know all of that this is gonna be pretty much the same but because it works but it's a verse it's not the chorus so the same bass is gonna be a compromise why would you want to compromise on, on that for example it needs a lot less bass to me it sounds like we need this I really like this, kind of nice, kind of nice. So this works, let's keep this. Try the com vintage comp. The Actually, let's add something else, like um, sort of an exciter, maybe? Why not? We can. Let's do this in an area like... The Maybe it's even too much. Yeah, it's too much. See, sometimes just it doesn't work. But I want to work better here. There's a frequency in the lows there. This. So we have two choices. We could make this steeper. This kind of sounds radio-ish. I like it. Wanna... 
why not? Why not? We haven't treated the intro guitars, so obviously there's a little bit of a little bit of what well, like a you know just doesn't sound i would probably I, I i'm not interested now in doing this but let's try 15 just a little bit and i would use the compressor for the lead the bvg comp people I, we could reuse some stuff. Let's try the verb too. Why not? I mean, it wasn't that bad. And probably have some delay here, which we can't really use, or some exciter or stuff, but let's call it that it works. Let me try and just narrow these down. I hear some resonance, but I don't quite mind. But if we were to cut it, we could go here. This, this area here. It's 420. Huh, look at that. It's 420, but we could go dynamic CQ. So here, 420, and we say when, when, you know, when I lower it, Yes, then we move it to the other guitar. Okay, we can do the same here because they're kind of not too in phase. Maybe we flip phase on it. Can we flip phase in this? No. no. But we brought these up, right? So this would bring down. We kind of EQ them slightly differently, just so that we have... Now I kind of want them to be a little bit brighter. So why not trying just the exciter? You know, I kind of like the tape, I gotta say. Let's try and bring in the tape anyway for the chorus guitar. Was here, right? Ah, no, it's not this, hold on. I just wanna, just, just a little bit brighter because I'm getting to bright, 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 I know, but it kind of works, so if it works. So let's pin this and open these bo both of them. And G3 and G3, G4, perfect. So now we're gonna find... One, five, six, six. Let's take some of this. Let's take some of this. Okay. So those two takes would need to go to a different bus because they're very different in sound. Right? Am I right or not? These two need to go duplicate tracks, complete, yes. And then we cut here. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And then we take these off. And then we take these off. So now we have these two. 
and we can um, just avoid using the isotope stuff that we added on the chorus guitars but these are now that's actually the opposite okay these two yes and not these two because there's a lot of bass here and i wouldn't want them to be that bass i think this is gonna work better for some reason Yes, and then we rebalance them like this. Close this guy. Maybe we don't go full blast, a little bit less. So. So when they're singing, you can hear there's a little bit of masking right here. Here. Nice. I mean, we need a little bit of highs, probably, but not that much. Just because it's a race, usually. I mean, this genre usually has... So here we have some more BVGs. We're gonna just copy whatever we've done here. One, one, hello, one, one. It, it's probably not gonna work, but you know, we have up until the first chorus, who cares? And it's just gonna be used to demonstrate what I want you to know about Neutron and then we're done, people. So we do this. We do this, we do this, we do this, we do this, we do this. That's a bass line, could work. Nice. One thing I would do to this would be, do we have an EQ here? We don't. So I'll show you what I want to do with Neutron. So we had relays first, right? All of these guys here, relay, relay, relay. These people have been used in Neutron to set the initial levels and stuff that we used here in the Neutron visual blah, blah, blah stuff. So suppose that we don't have these. Let me see if I can disable these guys immediately. Yes, thank you, Studio One, once again. So we no longer have this. We keep the neutron visual, but we kept it at zero. So bye. Ah, but it does change. All right, all right, all right. I see, I feel ya. Let's bring it in, because this was setting our initial volume. Yes, so it has to stay here. Now, we're going to take tonal balance control, which I really love. Let me find it out. Tonal, tonal balance control 2, after the limiter or before. Do we hit the limiter at all? No. So we have no mix bus compression. We have n nothing at all. Uh, so let me put it on the master bus, actually. So it's out of my printing segment. And let me take the record that I've sampled. So I took a target from a folder. So I took a whole album 
that is a reference that these guys like, suppose. And I have loaded it into tonal balance control. So I know that I have to stay within these limits, but I can also solo them and I can also select sources, which is everything isotope that I've used. Okay, it's pretty awesome. Now, I want to put something on some buses here, for example. I could put on anything a neutron 3. Let's just try an EQ, okay? I just want to demonstrate how this works. So I'm opening a neutron 3 EQ on every, every instance here. And let me just check the visual, okay? Because I have all of these EQs. I don't want this. EQ, 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 gate. I think these are fine without anything, right? You. They sound the same because I haven't altered it. So we have to give names to these things. So this is our, I'm going to make just an underscore, uh, drums EQ. This guy is bass EQ. Let me just double check that I put it here. Yes. This is guitars EQ. And the reason why I'm doing this is that with the underscore, I know it's a bus. BVG1 EQ. No, sorry. LDV EQ. Again, it's going to take just a sec, but you're not going anywhere. So BGV is 1. BGV1 EQ. BGV1 B EQ. The time that you think you're wasting here... In terms of what Isotope says, it's gonna get saved back and gained back when you 3EQ, when you work on that. I'm gonna show you what. So you can contain BVGs, VGVs. I just wrote it wrong. <laughs> EQ. This guy is B, B, BGVs. Had you noticed before and didn't tell me? Okay, so. I have everything named here. So if I open the tonal balance control and even make it bigger or whatever, I have these underscores on top. So bass, BVGs, drums, whatever. So I listen to the mix, to the chorus, for example. And I notice that I'm good on bass already and good on highs. I'm a tad high on the low mids and I'm a tad low on the high mids. So everything's relative. I can, I can solo one of the bands and find out what's going on. Like, what am I hearing in the low mids? So it could be just guitars. It could be vocal and guitars, or it could be the high mids. Let me hear this guy. Ha! So there's a lot of highs from my overheads. So if I go here on drums EQ, I now have control over the equalizer that is put on the bass of the drums. And I can stay here. I must not leave. There's no need for me to leave this interface and just tailor this to the standard. You are the one. You make me feel like this. So I think what we could do is take actually the guitars and tame them a little bit. You are the one. You make me feel like this. You are the one. Screaming your head for the prince. Missing puzzle. I might like it, I might not. Let me hear it again. Okay, let's try and take, for example, the um, drums, could be, and try and give a little bit more, which seems weird to me, a bit more overheads. So, but, but that's the reference. That's a reference record. So. Okay. 
okay, but now the vocals don't really sound right to me. So... So now I can EQ the gain and I don't have to leave these, uh, which I did, but I didn't want to. Uh, tonal balance. I can engage more output of these bass, for example, the drums. I kind of liked mine better. Kind of liked mine better. So I think the reason for this, and come, you know, it's very useful, but the reason why I'm getting these readings is that I'm comparing the masters on CD against what I have here. So I wouldn't go as far as rebalancing things. I like the fact that I am flat on the um, on the effects, meaning that the bass, the things, the balances kind of sound right. I'm just a little bit off balance with everything here, but I'm not gonna touch these actually any longer. I kind of... Let me hear it. I would only do minor adjustments like this. So the, the lead could be lower. Okay, we could do kind of the same thing here. I would still go a little bit higher on the highs here. Because you can use it independently, you don't need to use it, you know, obviously on the tonal balance. I still think that the lead vocals could need some compressor. So let me go Ozone Dynamics and just put it maybe at the very end before the Dyne EQ, a little bit. I could even go at the end. Let's try it. Actually, vintage, vintage, vintage. Could could work if we go with the um, with the multiband. It's actually very you know accurate, but well, I don't want that. You are the one. You make me feel like this. You Yes, kind of a tone rebalance, but done, you know, the old school way. So I would, in the very end, put some vintage comp 
on the master balance we could do a master rebalance i don't i don't really want to do that because i don't think there's need for it but definitely this definitely a vintage um, eq here and we could put a neutron compressor actually but th this is usually the, the old way that i do it i put a compressor on it could be three to one uh 10 100 try and find a smooth maybe So sharp does no longer <laughs> work, as you heard, he's just scrapping out on us. But the smooth, man, the smooth works. Yes, and it's that what we were missing. So how about some tape? Let's try vintage tape. Let's try 15. Well, it could work, but I don't don't quite like the vintage vibe that it gives. So I'm gonna go neutron neutron compressor, and I'm gonna go for some bands here. I wanna go with three bands. We could go we could go like this, right? So sometimes this is what I like to do. Like I was experimenting and we had like a crossover at 2K and then sort of 8K. I'm kind of going in between these two, but this is the three areas where we could, we could, you know, work on the sound. So very gently, 1.4, 1.4, 1.4, attack 10, 10. Let's start basically here. And let's try and see if we can make sort of a mixing, like remixing sort of uh, balancing act of it, just, just to get a little bit more meat. So it's very fancy that we see the peaks of these here in the graph. So I just bring down this guy and then the knee, right? Where's the knee? Where's the knee? It's knee four, knee, th knee three. So it shows, showing me the area of influence, right? So I like it, but you hear it's a little bit too honky. So I'm kind of overdoing it a little bit, but it's getting very radio-ish ag aggressive in a way, right? So let's try and tame maybe the highs a little bit. I like it though. Okay. You are the one. You make me feel like this. You are the one. Screaming at the Missing puzzle things. Come and fill me in. The devil's voice has spoken so many. The devil's voice has spoken so 
kind of hope I'm not white. Kind of, kind of hard to adjust the makeup, I have to say, because it's kind of really small. So he usually auto compensates gain, but I like to go manual. I don't dislike it. It's kind of, you know, it's a three bandy cue, so it's going to be aggressive on the master bus. It could work. Let's try a final touch of EQ on the mid side. It should work, right? Mid side. Here we go. So. So let's find areas where we don't like on the side channel first. These I don't like. Let's go digital. So now we need the cleanliness of it. These I really like. Okay, let's go to the mid now. We need those highs. I would need one more band and I'm gonna take it from here. High pass, flat. So it's a tad less, um, um, I would say, open but it just sounds much better less resonances and stuff so now we're going to use the imager to make it wider maybe only on some areas maybe only on two dangerous to use crossovers here it's like a 1k crossover Oh, 
called this sort of a radio effect. Okay, I'll leave it here. That could be an idea. It's only expanding this area and this area. I don't dislike it, it could work. Finally, where's our limiter? We had it here, we have to use a, another one. I don't think I wanna move this, even if it's, all right? Let's try and, and simulate picking it out. See, in this case, I'm not getting loudness, but what I just want to let you understand is that you do need peak limiting when you have these kind of songs. It's just endemic to how the records are made. It just makes everything sound better to me. And I know it's just clipping, it's whatever, it's using a limiter, it's just compressing it, but it's part of the sound. And the bus compressor is one thing, this is a different thing, and it, it, it's just there. I'm curious to see where I am with the balance. Not too far, huh? Not too far. How about we just try and EQ some areas just in general? I don't know, just a regular, regular EQ here. And uh, I'm calling this final mix, final mix EQ. Although obviously it has to do with how the instruments are made if you wanna just, you know, I wouldn't be too analytic on it, honestly. But if we go here, can I select it here? Final mix EQ? Probably not because it's not. Oh, yes, I can. Ha! You are the one. You make me feel like this. You are the one. Screaming you can't put grin. Missing puzzle pains. Come and fill me in. The devil's voice has spoken. Kind of better. You are the one. You make me feel the I find it hard to believe that the drums are not delivering enough highs. It's it's so loud. <laughs> All right, we got it, we got it, we got it. It was just the guitars. I mean, just, maybe you don't like it, maybe you do, but tonal control is telling us, look, you're in that ballpark of the record that the band loves. So it could be a useful thing. So, people, there you have it. This was a mix of a very, you know, power rock kind of oriented thing. We started with no drums at all in kick and snare, and we went off onto trying what Neutron and Ozone and all of, well, not all of them, I haven't tried all of their plugins, but there's some things I have used and you saw me just blazing through them. There's some things I haven't used and it just worked. They just worked out of the blue, boom, like that. And there's just some things I had to go back and retry, but the tool works. If you just wanna invest, if you wanna you know, go in there, don't feel bad that it's digital, don't feel bad that it's a futuristic kind of um, approach. As I said, I have colleagues, dear friends from high school, whatever, that they have done pretty successful records just using Isotope. So there you have it, there's no excuse. The tool works. And again, 
Thank you very much to the people at Isotope that made this possible for me to just demonstrate what I would do on something like this. And it's the farthest from my routine that I would go with these uh, processing, because this is not a mastering um, scenario, this is a mixing rock scenario. So it's something I would do with analog gear, with a lot of compression and, and real tone shaping from the get-go, and real drums, a lot of real drums plus samples and stuff. So it's completely, completely different. Yet I really like how this sounds and I think it's really modern. I think it doesn't miss that uh, sort of analogish approach to some things. And um, yeah, um, that's, you know, something that you can really, really use. Sounds really great. I think it came, it has come a long way since it started. And this is a great, great tool, especially if you need to fine tune your um, listening environment or your ears to get less fatigue or to understand whether or not you're really straying off the path. I know a lot of people, and that's why probably you asked me to cover these, have issues understanding if things are too bright or not enough or what references do you use well tonal control with these neutrons all over the place that can be controlled with one gui make things really convenient sometimes it's so fast that just a little adjustment with the solo band makes you go like all right well i need brighter guitars for example here i needed brighter guitars in the very end to just get the little more high mid i kind of liked it before but if we had to stray with the references I will stay with the references and find out whether or not suppose the label is really pushing us to get that edgy sound well you we know for a fact that the analysis says that we were kind of lacking so we try and find ways that still sound a good compromise to us but they still you know they they make us push forward to the target so that's very good it works when you have very fast paced scenarios in which you have to mix fast i think it's think it's a great tool and it just shows that technology people has gone a long way and if you couple that with ear hears ears and hear ears and ears of experience i think you know you're gonna you, you're gonna do great so thank you very much again for being here see you next time this was mix loop on a friday afternoon with isotope tonal balance control in the neutron package and ozone 9 advanced Thank you very much for being here. And if you're watching this in the future, it's the same thing. You people from the future, hit subscribe, whatever, you know, support the channel, blah, blah, blah. All the things that the young people do say when they have these channels, right? Bye, guys. Ciao.